Distortion is a problem that you run into with almost every compressor, but usually it's also fixed pretty easily. So I've got a sine wave on track 1, and if I play it into Ableton's compressor right now, you can clearly hear the distortion. And you can also see the distortion in the waveform that I'm recording in track 2, and in the spectrum analyzer in the form of these overtones. But it's pretty easy to prevent this distortion from happening. So one thing to try is using some attack, which you can see gets rid of the distortion, but at the same time it also gets rid of most of the compression. So a better thing to do is to use some release. And this gets rid of the distortion, but it lets you keep the compression. And release is a control that you find in pretty much every compressor, so you can always use this to get rid of distortion. So you see that finding a solution is pretty easy, but I want to talk a bit about why the distortion happens in the first place. Okay, so I'm going to do a bit of drawing here. So what we started with was a sine wave coming into the compressor. So the sine wave is the input. And first what the compressor does with the sine wave is it uses it to build a new signal that represents the amplitude of the input. And in order to draw the signal, we can simply copy the input signal and turn the negatives into positives. So we take everything below the zero crossing and turn it into a positive. And now we have a new signal with the low amplitudes at the bottom and the high amplitudes at the top. So I'm going to refer to this new signal as the amplitude envelope. And the compressor can now use this envelope and measure it against the threshold that we set in the compressor. So let me just draw a threshold on top of this. So now we see that some parts of the amplitude envelope are over the threshold, and so that's where we will have compression, meaning that's where we will have a gain reduction applied to the input signal. And this gain reduction can be drawn as yet another signal, which we will call the gain envelope. And in this case, it would look something like this. And if you look at Ableton's compressor, you can also see this gain envelope. It's this yellow line, so this represents how hard compression is. And so that's what we're looking at here in the drawing, but at a much smaller time scale. So you can see that when the amplitude envelope passes the threshold, the compressor calculates the gain reduction, which gets bigger the farther you go over the threshold. And this gain reduction will be applied to the input signal down here to give us the output signal. So in the case of a really high compression ratio, the output signal will look something like this. So this is how a compressor works without any attack or release. It simply applies gain reduction one sample at a time, and this results in different parts of the waveform receiving a different amount of gain reduction, which means the sound is getting distorted and turned into something that doesn't look like a sine wave anymore. So if we don't want this distortion, what we really need here is for the entire waveform to get approximately the same amount of compression, so that the output of the compressor looks like a sine wave again. So we need to make the gain envelope look more like a straight line. And you can do this with attack and release. So first let me draw in some attack. So attack in most compressors applies to the gain envelope, and what it does is it slows down its downward movement. So in other words, it makes the gain envelope go down less quickly, after the amplitude envelope rises above the threshold. So if I dial in even a small amount of attack, the gain envelope starts to look more like this. And you can see that this starts to get us a bit closer to the gain envelope being a straight line. And the higher the attack is, the closer we get to that goal. But you can see that we cannot completely get rid of distortion by using attack without also getting rid of all compression which kind of defeats the purpose of a compressor. So let's get back to the situation without attack, and now I'm going to draw in some release. And what release does is it slows down the upward movement of the gain envelope, which means the gain envelope doesn't go up as quickly after the amplitude envelope drops down. So this is just a little bit of release, but if I use a high enough release, we get something like this. where we end up getting pretty close to keeping a steady amount of compression across the entire wavelength. 
So you see that release is pretty effective at removing distortion while keeping the compression active. But it does require a high amount of release to get rid of all distortion. Alright, so that's how it works in Ableton's compressor. But there's another way to deal with distortion that I haven't mentioned yet. And that is something that Ableton's compressor doesn't do. So what some compressors do is they use a hold either on the amplitude envelope or on the gain envelope. So for example, let's say we are currently at this point in time. A compressor can hold high values in this envelope for a limited amount of time. So in this case, this high value may be held for a while and replace the values after it that are lower than that value. So let's make the hold long enough to bridge this gap to the next peak value. And so we end up with a straight line on our amplitude envelope. And this means the gain envelope is also a straight line. And so you can see that if the hold is long enough, this is a really good way to deal with distortion. First of all, because we now have a perfectly straight gain envelope, but also because you only need a short hold time to do this, which means that you are now free to use a very short release if you want to. So Ableton's compressor doesn't use a hold like this and neither do any of the other compressors in Ableton as far as I know. And it's not always directly obvious whether or not a compressor uses a hold like this. In some cases you get a separate knob to control the length of the hold, which will be labeled hold or sustain or something like that. And examples of this would be Maximus by ImageLine and Pro-C by FabFilter. But in some other cases the hold may be there by default or it may be activated as soon as you use a little bit of attack or release. So if you're using a compressor with distortion and you notice that you can get rid of all distortion with just a tiny bit of attack or release, it might be because there's a hold on one of the envelopes. So yeah, those are some of the more common ways of dealing with distortion in a compressor. I have to say, most of this is from my own experience using compressors, so if you think something important is missing, Please let me know in the comments so everyone can see if there's something that needs to be added. Okay, see you later.